Hey yo, Duckies, Andy Lippy here, and today we're going to take a look at separating yourself from your background with any webcam at all. You want to get rid of your background so you can have, I don't know, replace it with something blurred like this? You can totally do that with this, and it's all done directly inside of OBS, all right? Without further ado, let's get into it. Put your rocket with a stone. This portion of the video is sponsored by Own.TV. Own.TV have got absolutely everything you could possibly need for your stream, whether or not it be overlays and designs, so you want to take advantage of what you're learning today and apply it to a really cool, sleek overlay. You can do that. You can get yourself some sub emotes and badges. You can even make your own as well. You can save yourself a cheeky 50% off anything on that store with offer code Andy50. It does go a long way to supporting the channel as well. Right, so to get this to work, we need to download it from the OBS plugin website. So I'll leave the link in the description, so don't worry about that. Uh, this is Background Removal Portrait Segmentation by Roy Shilcrot. I can't even pronounce, I can't even read, let alone pronounce. So all the info and the brief demo of exactly what it's going to do is just here. We're just going to head up to go to download. This is going to take us to the GitHub page and you'll see all the updates that have been done on this plugin. So it's available for Mac and Windows. So we're going to select Windows and get that downloaded. It's about 50 megs, so it might take a little minute to download or something, depending on your connection. So we open the zip file up and we will find two folders in there, data and OBS plugins. So we need to copy them and we need to in take it to wherever your OBS is installed. By default, it should be in your C drive. Oh, mine's looking full. And inside program files, or maybe even program files 86, Mine's in program files, and then we go down to obs-studio, all lowercase, and we just paste it directly into that folder. I've already got it installed, so it's going to ask me if I want to replace, so I don't want to do that right now. So I'm just going to close that down, and I can jump directly into OBS. So inside of OBS, I've got a blank scene. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have a blank scene or anything. You can put it into whatever scene collection you've already got built up. I'm going to add a source. I'm going to add a video capture device. I'm just going to call it webcam press OK and then I'm going to select my uh, HD um, Pro webcam which is my Logitech C920 uh, HD Pro yeah, yeah 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 you guys know what I'm saying I'm going to change this to, to 1080 as well just so it's the uh, the correct sorry the 1280 720 I forgot it's 720 cam so we've got my camera just here and it's filled it up okay so I want to actually add a filter to this so I can click it and press filters just here or I can right click the source and go to filters and we're going to be applying the effect to audio and video filters so you'll see if you right click and press add you'll see background removal if you're not seeing that it means you've not got this installed correctly so jump back a stage you might have to just close OBS and reopen it after you've done it just in case so I'm going to select that and we're going to put background removal on and as you can see it's automatically cut me out as you can see so right now I'm kind of cut out you can see my hand and stuff working this is very rough there are a lot of settings that you can use here okay so depending on, on basically the power of your cpu or your gpu you're going to want different things here so your threshold i'm not going to go too much into this but this is kind of cutting you inside more so it's as if you're um, kind of trapping the image closer to your body and if i zoom that out as you can see if i uh, lift this up i'm getting more of the image in there so i can bring that right down and it's nice and tucked in on my body there you see a little bit of flickering as well and the contour filter as well so this again is about kind of how much of the original image and stuff like that that it's going to be seeing and we can also smooth it as well so if i turn that right down it's very blocky around my webcam but if i turn smoothing right up to the top it's a nice and smooth line as you can see i can feather as well which is quite nice but i would recommend if you are going to feather only do it a little bit because you'll probably see in my OBS right now, it's like, bro, you need to calm down. You're like doing some next level stuff. But fiddling about with that setting, the feather setting, and also the inference, uh, which you're gonna be using the CPU or the GPU, or the segmentation model, changes how this reacts and also the performance in OBS. So as you can see, as I'm changing, I'm not changing any other settings here. I'm just changing the segmentation. So media pipe, you'll see I bounce back up to 60 frames a second. I'm not dropping any frames and it's quite smooth. Let's see what happens if I turn the feather up a little bit. 
you might see performance drop. But you've got to remember, I'm using two versions of OBS right now to record this video. So we've got uh, selfie segmentation as well. So it kind of cuts more of your uh, chairing and stuff like that in the background. So you need to find what is correct for you. So you've seen a lot of popping and stuff like that because I've got my camera quite far away just because I'm obviously filming this video uh, on a different camera at the same time. We've also got robust video matting as well. And you can see they all grant different performances. So again, this is limiting my OBS, but if you're not doing 60 frames a second, then you don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna leave it on media pipe for now, just because that's smooth for what I need to do for this operation. The next one is looking at background colors. So right now you're seeing everything's pitch black behind me. So if I press select a color and I choose green, the brightest green of all and press okay, now you can see we've just green screened ourselves so if i close this down you can see i'm now officially green screened you can see sometimes my arms will pop out or something like that but to say this is running directly in obs i'm not having to use any other software i only have to rely on obs then it's pretty good so i want to say apply something like a different background behind me what i can do is go back into my filters and we can add another effect filter this time and we're going to do a chroma key so we're going to select that, press chroma key, and you'll see it's kind of just gone pitch black again, okay? Which is completely normal. The default settings, if you've used that green color, should be perfectly fine. So we're just going to press close. And then now I can import any kind of media behind me, whether or not it be an image or, or something like that. So if I open up an image, for instance, press browse, select an image as so. So this is quite a large image, so I'm just going to use control F to fit it to my screen and I move the image down a layer. Now I've got a clear background behind me and also I'm cut out. Again, fiddling about with the settings more will stop this popping in and out. So the last setting I wanna show you is probably the most important is this calculate mask every X frames. Right now, this mask that is around me is being calculated every single frame to work out where my body is and it's tracking me. So it's acting really quick. This way, getting a little bit of popping like this because it's noticing this behind me as basically my body or my face. But if I change this mask up to two, we're actually doubling the performance here because we're checking every two frames rather than one. So it becomes a little bit slower to track me. If I really crank this up to say every 10 frames, for instance, you'll see it'll track my body but slower and you're getting the most performance out of this. And let's face it, if you're only using this on one of your gaming scenes and it's quite small, you're really barely gonna notice the artifacting around it and how delayed it is or anything like that. So just this helps clean up your scenes, all right guys? I mean, this plugin is not perfect and obviously it will take tweaking. I just wanted to show you basically how quick it is to get it working. If you guys need any assistance with this at all, let me know in the comments down below. And I will be covering other methods of doing this kind of thing like removing the background and also making a blurred background, all them kind of things later on in a different tutorial. So make sure you are subscribed. I wanna say a huge thanks to all these people that make me make this content full time for you guys. If you please consider joining Patreon or YouTube members from one pound a month, it'll go a long way to supporting me and all the other people that consume this content as I can constantly do it for free. And check out one of these videos just there because it will definitely take your stream to the next level. Put your rock for the stone.